Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill White again with a, a video here of a rather interesting case I had. I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society, by the way, and if you're interested in learning orthodontics, and you can get to one of the lecturers on the, the American Orthodontic Society. They can sure teach you. We have some wonderful teachers. So anyway, I'm going to show you a young lady here that we used uh, upper lip bumpers. We used an acrylic type first, and then we used the solid wire type lip bumper, and we put her in a reverse headgear, and we were correcting a mild class three uh, deal. I mean, one severe class three, but it was class three. And we'll get into this, and I'll try to be as uh, quick as I can and uh, run through this. Uh, here is the young lady. She doesn't have a real severe class three, but it is it is a class three. And she's got a rather prominent chin and a real good face. Uh, the This is not picture of her. She really doesn't look that bad, but back when I did this, you had to take the picture and send them off, and you couldn't change them uh, very easy. But anyway, we have a, a good facial height here, just about thirds you know, in the face, and that you have a good face height like that, and you don't have too much height of the lower third of the face. This is where we messes up and you add about a half inch or maybe a three quarters inch extra height than this and it messes up the appearance of the face. So anyway, this is a pretty pretty good face here, though it's class three, and you'll notice that the jaw is kind of off to the side here. Uh, in other words, this side over here is probably longer than this one over on this side. And it's caused by the dentition in there. I'll show you one reason for it in just a minute when we get to show you the case, uh, the pictures, pictures of the models that are there. Okay, this is a little nicer picture of her. She's got some nice dimples up there and, and a good smile line. Just, the upper lip's a little bit short, but not, not all that bad. And it's just slightly class three. Now, here are the models of her. And this was 1987, uh, actually, when we took these models. I don't know if we started it that quick. And she's got some orthodontic problems. And you can tell she pushes out and the teeth are occluding back in here and not here, and these are pushed out. So she's got a unusually large tongue that's putting some pressure on this. So when we repair this class three, we want to encourage pressure back here to bring the maxilla to the front as much as we can. And she's got some lower wisdom teeth that I'll show you. And the trick in these mild class threes like this is to take out the lower wisdom teeth but leave the upper wisdom teeth. Now that makes a difference. And we had trouble actually backing the mandible up. And when we got the wisdom teeth out back there, the, we had no trouble getting it back uh, when the wisdom teeth were gone. Okay, when we look at the right side, you see this is a screwball. Uh, second by cuspid here is turned sideways and a cross by it. And the, uh, there's a little problem over here. And this is definitely class three. You see the molar really uh, should be back to about along this point right around here. And it's sticking out about that far. So we, and these uh, teeth right here 
part going down in the, in the upper interior, just edge to edge right out here. So it's class three, there's no question uh, on that. And on the other side, it's not quite as bad, but it is further out class three. This point ought to go, ought to go right down there. And that uh, is off about that much on the uh, left side of the mouth there. Okay, now we look from the top side and you see this uh, tooth right here is uh, turned sideways and it's taken up a lot more room in the arch than this one. You see, it's about like that. So we're going to turn that around and take this up. You'll notice also that the uh, center of the palate is kind We'll get that to straighten up a good bit as we bring this back. Uh, we don't go through and show you everything that we do here on it, but we'll show you a lot of it. Now the lower arch looks pretty good, but it's the one that's pushing out in the class three uh, type. And here, this is the way she occludes. These teeth are touching back here. This doesn't and the tongue must be coming up in this to some extent to keep it full. So we don't want to correct the class three by backing this up. Uh, well, we don't want to back that at all. I mean, just by backing the lower teeth up to correct this, it's better that if we can pull this forward more to correct it and very little pushing this back. So we're going to wear some class three elastics, but we're going to have a reverse headgear bringing this out too, so that we get most of the correction by moving the maxilla to the front. And that's one problem in class threes, the relapse, because people back the lower teeth up too much and they still have the problem there and it's going to uh, they, they have a lot of, of class threes that relapse in surgery. They don't do them right. Okay, same thing over on the left side, up above. Then you see that tooth back here that we'll turn around and it'll line up. That's not any big problem. It's just regular orthodontics uh, that does this. Okay, uh, down on the bottom. Same thing, no problem there. All right, we're going to jump forward quite a bit, and we've got it all lined up, and everything's working, so we're, we're going to be putting pressure on this where we'll wear the, we're wearing a midline here across here. We've got that pretty well uh, taken care of there. And then we're going to be coming off here with, with these class three elastics and also this reverse headgear. So there's a lot of other things in correcting this. And we'll run through and show you that as quick as we can here. We've got that tooth turned around, you see. And now it's taken up a normal side. And so this is shifted in that direction as we close that up. That's just regular orthodontics. And uh, we're going, okay. Now we've got a reverse headgear in there. And this is one I'll show you from the outside, but this is one of the legs. And you're wearing elastics off of the reverse headgear up to about the first bicuspid right in here, pulling this forward. Make sure that the elastic where you regulate where you pull out here is coming through when the lips are relaxed and closed just on the rubber band. So the rubber band is not pushing the bottom lip down or the upper lip up. It's when she closes to it, it just closes on the rubber band. So it doesn't leak at night and get all the dried saliva and chap the lips and everything. And then here is a class three elastic coming off of the, look like the lower cuspid down here, and we're going up 
to the molar on that side. Now let me get here a little bit further. And this is the same thing on the other side of the mouth, the class three elastic and also the elastic coming off of the reverse headgear. Uh, this may not make sense here. Now we got a cup down on the chin and then this wire goes up above and there's a strap going across the uh, forehead up there and it pushes back on that. That's just another view of it. Okay, here we are. This cup right here, actually, and the elastic goes right through the lips. You see the lips aren't pushed down or up here. They're just straight across. That's one of the secrets wearing these things. And the wire going up here is, comes in front of the ear and comes up with a strap right across the forehead. Well, you take the distance in here and where this is pulling from down on the bottom and the wire is up here. So about uh, at least two thirds or as close to three fourths of the force is going to uh, be putting on the chin down here. The strap is not going to take very much force up above. It's further away. So it'll be less force here and it pushes on the chin button and that's what limits you it'll break out this and we fold up kleenex or something and put a little something padding underneath there to help it so you get as much relief for the tissue to keep the tissue from breaking out in when you're wearing these reverse headgears now this puts added force back here on the condyle and that's something you've got to watch. If you've got a good, healthy condyle and everything, you can wear this. But now the people aren't, they aren't going to wear this all this much. If they'll wear it around the house and sleep in it at night, you can do a lot of things for them in there. But if they don't, it's, so it's hard to get a person to uh, wear the reverse headgear that much. Now, what we're trying to do is pull the maxilla forward with this. Uh, you can go in with tads now and put some little tads up in the palate and put spring, fix a spring on it and try to push the maxilla forward with that. Uh, so there are different ways of uh, skinning a cat, as we always said. Nobody's getting scats anymore. Uh, all right, here she's, uh, she's at least smiling <laughs> and acting like she's uh, happy with that. But uh, I, you have to really talk to somebody to get them to wear something like this. And uh, if they'll wear it around the house and sleep in it at night, uh, you can pull the maxilla or you can do all sorts of things with the teeth if they'll wear them. Now this is from the side and you see these elastics go right through where the lips so they don't push it up or down. And you regulate that by where you go on this uh, rod that comes off of this pad, you see. And then this comes around and I've got a little pressure on the tissue here. You can bend this out so that it doesn't press on the tissue. You don't want to match it on that when you use this type of reverse headgear. Now these things work, but people, and you've got to convince a young lady like this that you can make her look better. Now this is, comes in real handy where we have missing teeth up here and we want to drag some teeth from the back to the front and we don't want to pull these backwards now we go ahead and put tads in them and lock these upper teeth where they are and then pull the other teeth up and fill the gaps. Now if you go in and study the, the videos we've got on closing space on adults, you can see where we do that. You can, you can take in the teeth from the back of the mouth and just bring them all the way to the front if you uh, stay in there long enough. So let me go on. Uh, this is okay. We put a, an acrylic 
lip bumper in the upper first, and we make these in the in the office. They're not hard to make. We have a video on that. You can go see how we make these uh, lip bumpers if you want to. You make the wire out of a, a, I use an 018 by 025 uh, slot tube, you know, for this to go in rectangular tube. And this is a rectangular wire, 018 by 025. And you bend the, the arch wire that you need and then you put tape on the outside and put acrylic on it, and you just build these right in here. And you have to have the angle, like the gum tissue is going to be at an angle like this, and the, the pad on the lip bumper has to be at the same angle as the gum tissue right in here. And you advance this by opening the loop we've got on it. You make it bigger. And the loop will come in, I mean, it'll be up or spread it out, you know. And you can make it longer. And you've got to have the pad. And you keep the pad angled like the tissue. And keep a, about a millimeter or two of space between the pad and the tissue. So as the teeth move forward, they can have a vascular bed go in front of them. And that's a secret of bringing these teeth to the front, see? So you need to learn how to do that. There's a lot of things uh, you need to learn how to do. And here this is again, a uh, line in here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It's, it's just in front of the tissue. And so when we push on these teeth or pull on them with whatever, uh, they can move out and the uh, vascular tissue has to go along in front of this to develop the bone structure and the tissue, uh, anything uh, like wanting to be healthy with it. So you have to use a lip bumper. Lip bumpers are a vital thing. Uh, I keep advancing this as these teeth go out, you just stretch this deal. You could start out here and you end up with a thing bending out like that, something like that. And so you can advance this. This one's already been advanced a good bit right in there. You can learn a lot of stuff uh, just thinking of what can be done with these cases. Now this is the uh, other lip bump on that, uh, the left side. Uh, and now we're going to change lip bumpers and uh, I'm going to use just a straight wire one at the end of it. You could have just started out with it. But you see this one has been advanced quite a bit right there and we're still going forward. We got these teeth out over the lower teeth now in the class, the, uh, uh, class three is being corrected here. Now that's the uh, acrylic lip bumper. Again, we see this this little tooth right there, and uh, it's kind of an odd shape tooth. But when you get it turned around here, it doesn't look all that bad. Now there's the other. Uh, okay. Now we've got this reverse head here, and we come in and we have a bumpers under the lip now and it's running the interference for these teeth up here and we're pulling on these teeth from about the bicuspid forward with these arms of this lip bumper in there. Now if you you can just move teeth all over the place it's just figure out how you can get pressure to the teeth and then you've got to learn where the teeth press and where they chew and the angles and the cuspal inclination of the teeth makes a difference as to how you're going to get it. But now there's the class three elastic here and this is the 
reverse head gear elastics there. And my chair is kind of squeaking, so you hear the, that. All right, uh, here is the uh, cephalometric uh, when we stopped. I have, you can see where the tooth is right here. And that's class three, and you can see the prominence of the chin and everything. Now we went back and looked at the uh, condyles. She, as far as I remember, we didn't have any big TMJ problem. This, these condyles down here look pretty good. Up here, they're not near as uh, well defined, and I'm not sure whether the pictures are real good on that transcranial x-ray we took on it. Okay, here we go. She's uh, age 15, three at this point. This was the start. Now, here's the secret to, to doing these mild class threes. This wisdom tooth has no chance of coming in. There's this, you can see the jaw going up in that direction right there. And uh, it is blocked off here. We can't back this up too easy without burying this wisdom tooth even further. So I sent her in to get these wisdom teeth out. And uh, when we got them out, the movement of the jaw was much, much easier. And that's what you can do. See, they're gone now, and this can come back. And you see this tooth is pretty much in class one. We took our panorexes with a person biting the way they normally bite. And you can see this is pretty much class one now. And so we backed that up. And this is getting further down the line. Uh, now we leave the upper wisdom teeth and whatever they'll press on this going forward, that's great. Because we want the maxilla to be be further out and want this on the bottom to be able to go back some. We don't want to go too far and crowd the tongue, but anyway, it's more relaxed back in here now, and it came back to a pretty much class one relation. You can see uh, the way the lower molars have to be out in front of the upper molars like that. All right, we getting pretty close to finishing this up. Now here she is a little later down the line. That's uh, now I wanted to show you this uh, wire uh, lip bumper. Now it looks like it's hideous and terrible, but people more or less like to wear them because if their lip is too short and if they look better with it filled out up there, uh, you can put this in and you can bend the wire and angle it like you want it. Like if the, uh, the angle of the, the tissue in there is like that, you can bend that wire and angle it there or you can angle it and then you can expand these things right here and it lengthens it and keeps it out where the wire doesn't touch the tissue up here but just runs against the lip and keeps the lip away from the teeth while you advance this out. And this comes down and goes in your head gear tube back here on this side. Okay, that's a, and you can take a piece of old 4 old wire and you, you can bend one of these in about a half a minute or a minute or so. Uh, you just start, you just take a, let me, uh, make a clear place here I can show you this you just take a, a piece of wire and you take a young pliar and put it right here then you bend these up and then you turn it over here and you bend them down again put your pliar back in here bend it up again and then put the pliar here and bend it back down again and then back up again and then come back here and then drop down where your, your headgear tube is 
And the same thing over here. You just kind of go back and forth with this. And you can run this at any angle you want and drop it down. And you've got the thing made. And you then, now after you make it, you put the curvature to it. And now we will put, if you looked at it from the side, you can lean it this way. You see, it'll be coming like that. And so it follows the contour of the tissue itself. And they're quite easy to make. And people don't mind wearing them. And they run interference for the uh, front teeth or wherever you want to, you know, go out. It'd have to be the upper front teeth. Uh, I've not used them on the bottom arch. They use those acrylic ones. Okay. This is back again in the mouth. And you can see how this goes. Now we're pretty close to finish. You get an idea of the angle that you see here. Put this in. And you see it leaves an imprint of these in the gum tissue up above. You don't want to put too much and cut the circulation off of this, but you could flatten it out a little, make these a little closer together. It would maybe press on the gum more evenly. But this works like that. And I've had a good success with those on wire type uh, rib bumpers. Now this leg, you come down, go back a little, and then you drop down across the teeth and goes into this deal. It just sticks in there. And they just stick it in. And they can take it out and brush their teeth and put it back if, or just leave it in when they brush. So this is two or three things you pick up in this uh, deal. <clears throat> this side looks the same way. And here we've finished this young lady up and we've got her in a class one. And that's the end of the video. So I'm going to say goodbye and uh, thank you for watching. I hope you join our uh, program here and, and appreciate you looking at it. So thank you very much and I'll say uh, goodbye.